Right, welcome back. And in this section, let's talk about perception as projection. You see, we can only perceive what's already in our consciousness. And this comes from a guy called Carl Jung. And he said that we perceive, or what we perceive, is what we are. Now, Carl Jung was a Swiss psychologist and one of the three fathers of psychology, along with Freud and Adler. He said what we perceive is who we are. What we perceive outside of ourselves is who we are. Now that means we can't perceive anything outside of ourselves that's not in us. You may agree and say, yeah, I can understand how this person's my projection and that person's my projection, but certainly not that person. Yeah, you know, what Carl Jung would say is, the person with whom you have the most negative emotion is clearly a projection of you. Only that it's so unconscious that you're not conscious of it. The actual quote is, we tend to take our most unconscious material and project it on people and events around us. That which is unconscious must of need be projected on people and events that are around us. The reason is, when we encounter it, then we can become conscious of it and deal with it. When we get the learnings, then the projection will change. This has to do with results. Your client will come to you for whatever change they want, and a lot of you getting results will actually depend on your beliefs and projections inside of you about them. This has actually been proven with kids. So they took this group of kids and they told the teacher that the special needs teacher was not available that year and, well, this teacher would just have to do the very best that they could. And that year the kids all got around a C average. The next year they took the exact same children and they took them to another teacher and they said, look, these children are really gifted and, well, the teacher that should take them is not available. Do the best that you can and that year the same children got A's and B's. So the point of view of the teacher was actually projected out onto the children and their performance. Now this is also true about your own children if you've got any and it's also true about you. Your unconscious mind will perform to the extent that you believe it will perform and to the extent that you believe it won't perform. We tend to perceive people and events around us based on our preconceived filters. And those preconceived filters, Carl Jung would call archetypes. Which means that most of our perception, and so therefore our projection, are archetypes. It's archetypal and is influenced by our personal beliefs, personal choices, personal decisions, and so forth. You know, the 25,000 genomes that the human body has can't possibly be responsible for all the variations of all the people in the world. All the differences can't be accounted simply down to the genetics. In fact, early 2000s, the scientists actually cloned a cat. So they took a cat, they cloned it, and cat, cat 2, that for all intents and purposes, was made up of the exact same genes as cat 1, had a different fur color. Well, how is that possible? Because it should be an exact replica of the other cat. You see, what it goes to show us is actually there's a lot more going on in regards to environment and what's going on inside our minds that makes a difference. Going back to those 134 bits of information which you choose out of your 11 million bits every second. You choose the 134 bits according to your own personal filters. So they filter the information as it comes in. And what that means, it's impossible for us to perceive something which we are not. So when you look across at your spouse and you go, she's magnificent. Hey, good news, that's you. If you look across at your spouse and you think, that person's no good. Guess what? That's you. So whatever you perceive in someone else or something else is your projection. When people are in situations where, you know, things get a little bit tough or they're unhappy, one of the tendencies is to actually run away and they hope that the new place, things are going to be better. Well, you know, the people might be different, 
but eventually the situation is going to be very similar because it's going to be the same projection. Until that projection becomes conscious, meaning we look inside ourselves and we look outside of ourselves and we become conscious of what it is, we're going to continually project out the same stuff. You see, the grass isn't green on the other side. We think everything is not our fault and everything is always down to other people. Now this is really powerful, especially when working with clients. To the extent that you have negative emotions about someone or something, the more likely it is that it's a projection of yours. And so this is useful to explain to our clients as well. Now, I want to tell you a wonderful story. I talk about this during the trainings and I was doing a hypnosis training one day and this lady who, well, one of the students actually told me an amazing story. You see, it was about two weeks before the birth of her son and she was in for a checkup. And so the doctors and the nurse were doing their scans and it was clear that uh, the gynecologist was not too happy and, and something was wrong. So they sent this lady straight away to another hospital where they had better machinery to actually do a proper scan. And as the doctors there did their scan, again, the room fell silent. The doctor then came to her and said to her, look, you know, this can all be over in the morning and we'll give you the best care that we possibly can. You see, what actually happened was that the baby's brain never completely developed. And so they were suggesting that if she gave birth to the baby, that her son would not be able to breathe on his own and that she really should abort straight away to avoid herself and her family emotional and financial devastation. In fact, she couldn't even speak to her husband because they totally disagreed. You know, he was all for the abortion and she wasn't. She went ahead and she actually had the baby. And so the baby was born in March 2009 and she called the baby Indy. And so as Indy was born, he was immediately rushed to intensive care where he was put on machines and given all sorts of medication. And all she wanted to do was to be able to hold and breastfeed her child. But the doctors wouldn't let her have the child. You see, he was born without a cerebellum, meaning that he had no motor functions and as a result shouldn't be able to breathe. The Red Cross got involved, there was uh, a number of neurosurgeons and even some doctors from Chicago that got involved. And she felt like communication had pretty much just stopped between her and the rest of the world. All she wanted was to take her son home. Even her family thought, you know, she desperately needed help. Well, she managed to get herself and her, and her baby out of hospital. And she said the first thing that she did is she threw away all the medication that they'd given her. And she said all she wanted to do was take it hour by hour, day by day, and spend time with her son. She even moved to a different part of town. Her husband filed for a divorce. In fact, he, he even sued her for the other son and tried to get her committed as insane because she didn't want to give up the baby. Today, she has a beautiful boy who's never seen a doctor, only been to the dentist for a dental checkup. Intelligent young boy who's good at maths who jumps on the trampoline and does somersaults, who communicates better with children older than him. He gets bored at nursery school. He rides his bicycle without any training wheels. He's fully bilingual in speaking English and Afrikaans. Now how is it that this child, born without a cerebellum, who should, for all intents and purposes, not be able to walk and talk and breathe by himself, lives what appears to be a normal, happy life. You see, nothing has been projected out onto him to say, you will never be normal. You won't be able to do these things. Now, I really like that story. You see, 
Your perception of me is a reflection of you. And my reaction to you is an awareness of me. So we need to ask ourselves, what is it in me that I need to deal with? And, you know, that's not to say that we look as an example at a murderer and be okay with what they've done. It means that we deal with what we are projecting so that we don't have major negative reactions towards it. We could say that to the extent that I have a negative emotion about someone or something, I can be sure that that's a projection. And to the extent that I have a positive emotion, or to the extent that I have no negative emotions to that person or that thing, then I can be sure that I have incorporated that learning inside of me. Because everything is a projection. We'll talk more about perceptions projection at the live training. And so that's the end of this section. In the next section, let's talk about neurotransmitters.